I'll just wrap it up here um, with the main conclusion that there doesn't seem to be any inherent benefit to training fasted, that there doesn't seem to be any inherent benefit to training fasted, that there doesn't seem to be any inherent benefit to training fasted. What is going on, Off Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna talk about why Jeff Dippert is actually wrong in his latest video about fasting cardio. We'll talk about what the science has to say. Stay tuned. Okay, so first let me start by saying that yes, he did use studies that were pulled, but there were certain limitations in the study that actually skewed the numbers. And I'm not even talking about the limitations that he mentioned in which there was only 20 participants and it was only for 30 days or anything like that. I'm talking about interjected limitations by the people who were conducting the studies to begin with. For example, let me touch on the study that he touches on that is used as the more convincing study to prove that uh, fasted cardio doesn't actually work. After four weeks, both groups lost a significant amount of fat, but they found no difference in fat loss between the groups, implying that both fasted and fed cardio are equally effective. The study that he referenced is the study of the 20 women split into two, uh, where 10 of them were doing fasted cardio, 10 of them we're doing fed cardio. The problem with this is that when you do the fasted cardio, you still have to remain in a fasted state after that. And it also depends on how long you've been fasting. This is just overnight fasting, which is just sleeping. And that just consists of maybe seven hours or eight hours of fasting. Once you go into a workout in that type of fasted state, you're not fully engaged in that post absorptive range that I've mentioned before, where body fat is being tackled because your insulin has dropped to its baseline level. And then every single one of those women right after, exactly right after every single cardio workout were given a protein meal replacement shake. So basically they were never even allowed to get into that post absorptive range. So if you're not in that post absorptive range, you're not going to burn body fat. It's the lack of the people who have set up the platform for that study to understand that it is much more than simply just the fasted cardio workout. You have to be in a true fasted state for you to see the effects of a fasted cardio workout. Plus it is very limiting considering the fact that it is only for 30 days. There have been studies done on mice that of course they're not humans, but of course we know that if you take these studies and move them over, usually they are proven to be correct. There have been studies done on mice that show after long periods of doing fasted movement and fasted cardio for, for the mice, that they do see an increase in heart respiratory functions that push to burn more calories and to burn more fat. One other thing that Jeff Nippard touched on is the RER, which is the respiratory exchange ratio. That right before the cardio session, the fed group had a higher RER, implying they were burning less fat before and during the session. But 12 and 24 hours post-exercise, the fasted cardio group was now burning significantly less fat. Now, when he talks about the respiratory exchange ratio, this is simply them taking that information and saying, well, if this is the mathematical equation for how much fatty acids are burned with you inhaling plus the air stimulated within the room, then you can burn more carbs than you can fatty tissue. Well, we know that carbs are burned much more easily in the body. Glycogen is released much more easily than body fat. So being in a fasted state puts you in a better position to tackle the body fat. Carbs will be released from your body super easy as your body simply wants to always use that as the fuel source when it has the opportunity to do so. And they show that during the uh, fasted cardio, it then flips when the person is eating. But this is also not taking into account being in a fasted state. It is simply taking into account doing a cardio session fasted. Now he also goes ahead and touches on a meta-analysis study, which a meta-analysis study is simply a system where they take all these studies that are not entirely related to the fasted cardio but has results within fasted cardio inside of that study and then they extrapolate that and put it together and come out with a total mean for each one of them or an average number to determine if one is better than the other. So they take all of these different things from just five studies, put them together and determine a conclusion with that, that there is no significant increase in body fat loss with the fasted group versus the fed group. But I can also find a meta-analysis that was done in 2014 that shows that there is a significant increase 
in uh, the fasted group over the the fed group and i will link that study in the bottom but you can see here that they show a significant increase in the fasted group over the fed group and this was a meta-analysis done with over 96 different studies as opposed to just the five studies that jeff nippard uh utilized in his video and also i want to touch on one thing you have to be someone who can maintain a fasted state you have to be utilizing intermittent fasting for fasted cardio to be at its most effective and most powerful because if you're not doing that then you are essentially just putting fasted cardio in a small very very small box of just fasting within that time frame and then immediately eating afterwards and not even giving yourself enough time to fast before you even got into the fasted cardio so a lot of people say well there isn't enough studies there aren't any studies that really touch on this but there is there's a study that was done in 2014 using people doing ramadan fasting so they took these people who do ramadan fasting which to me is the most accurate study analysis that you can do when you want to test truly if intermittent fasting is working in every single possible scenario and they use this for the fasted cardio scenario they actually have people do fasted cardio and have people do fed cardio and they tested them within a 42 day time span which is more than the 30 day time span of the 20 women it was done with 19 men nine was in the uh, fed group 10 was in the fasted group when they checked the numbers nothing happened with the body weight in terms of significant difference the body weight was exactly the same but here's the thing that is because caloric intake will always determine body weight loss that is calories in versus calories out it has to be there for you to lose weight or for you to gain weight but the thing with the ramadan fasting group versus the ramadan fed group uh, before doing their cardio session is that the fed group lost no percentage in body fat at all and the fasted group lost an astounding 9.2% body fat percentage off of their body, had a higher fat-free mass and retained more lean mass than their fed counterpart. The fed group and the fasted group, because of the caloric intake, were around the same amount. There was no significant difference in weight, but there was a significant difference in the actual fat loss itself because the fed group had no body fat loss at all and the fasted group had over 9.2 percent body fat loss this is because when you are in a fasted state when you are in a true fasted state and you do fasted cardio you are enhancing your ability to burn more fat because that is what your body is tapping into now if you just do fasted cardio and then simply eat right after that and you don't practice intermittent fasting and keeping yourself in a fasted state then of course that's the thing with intermittent fasting fasted cardio you are doing intermittent fasting throughout the day and you're implementing fasting cardio in conjunction to that intermittent fasting protocol this then lends to you actually being more effective with your fasted cardio because you continue to fast or you utilized it during a true fasted state and by true fasted state i mean significant hours after the post absorptive range seven hours is not significant enough after the post absorptive range where it puts your insulin at base Baseline and it puts you into body fat burning is it true that there isn't significant studies that prove yes there are limitations as there are limitations with jeff nippard's studies of short time frames uh the although this has a longer time frame than the 20 women study uh it is still a short time frame but it's very telling the fact that their weights reduction was the exact same however the body fat reduction was significantly higher and actually non-existent in the fed state and 9.2 percent in the fasted group and this is a group that did intermittent fasting throughout the day because they were doing ramadan so they didn't simply fast for the cardio element alone they had a fasting regimen and they also fasted for the cardio element so was jeff nippard just absolutely wrong on all accounts no i mean there are studies that show what he was saying was true the studies he presented did show that but i am presenting the limitations that those studies have the women's studies were skewed because they were given food a full meal replacement shake right after the cardio session not even allowing themselves to go into that afterburn in the fastest state while doing a fasted cardio to give them more of a body fat burning and extend their post absorptive range after the six hours or after the 12 hours which some of them may not have even gotten into that 12 hours and if they didn't do intermittent fasting throughout the day and they're not fat adapted they're probably closer to that 12 hour mark before they're in a true insulin baseline level where they can start burning fat effectively and switch over from using the carbohydrate 
glycolates and glucose to using the body fat storage. And the meta-analysis that he shows only provides five different extrapolated studies that they put together to come up with that average. Meanwhile, the meta-analysis that I'm presenting here that will be linked at the description below has over 96 studies and does indeed conclude that it is significant body fat loss with people who do fasted workouts over someone who does a fed workout. However, the Ramadan study, which was 19 men versus his study, which was the 20 women, shows that there is an actual significant loss if you're incorporating it as a tool while being in a full fasted state and not a partial fasted state while you're not fully utilizing the benefits of the fat loss but on top of that you are also eating immediately after so you never give yourself that ability to get into that post absorptive range the people who are doing these studies are limiting their information by simply just looking at fasted cardio in a small box and one thing i want to say is by no way am i attacking jeff nippard as this is him simply pulling out studies to show why fasted cardio doesn't work and this is me pulling out the studies to counteract what he has mentioned within the studies that he used for the fasted cardio. I'm simply showing the limitations that it has and why those fasted cardio sessions will not work to its fullest extent if certain protocols aren't met. Of course, giving food to someone right after the fasted cardio isn't going to allow them to keep on with the afterburn that's going to push further the body fat burning. You stump it if you give them food right after the fasted cardio. All of the studies that I've just mentioned will be in the description down below. And I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon and I'm going to put their names right up here. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace!